Good morning, friends. Um, I think it's afternoon now. I don't even know what time it is. I've been fighting with this damn fly for uh, quite a while. Um, and this one is a paradrake, and it stemmed from two things. Um, Max uh, Boshin at the shop asked me the other day to show him a green drake that he hadn't seen before. Um, so this is sort of an older pattern um, that I bet he hasn't seen before. So I'm going to show him this uh, this next week. But um, I figured I'd make a video too, and then then I, then I won't have to deal with all his follow-up questions. Um, and then also Norm Frechette asked me to do a paradrake, and this one's been on my list for quite a while. Um, now my history with this fly, back when I was a kid, I used to tie these for West Bank anglers for uh, gray drakes uh, for them, which was just tied with natural color uh, cow elk hair. Uh, but I'm going to tie you the green drake version. Um, they're really all tied the same way. They're just uh, tied with different uh, colored materials. So uh, I'm going to show you how I go about this. And I've altered this a little bit from the way that I used to do it in that um, I'm going to tie this rather than on a standard dry fly hook. I'm going to tie this. This one's on a 2487. Um, and and what it is is a little bit shorter hook, um, nice big wide gap, um, but specifically the down eye. The down eye helps making that head. Um, I had done some of them on a 2499 with the ring eye. Um, and while you can do it, it just doesn't, doesn't look as right to me. Um, and it's, you know, an extended elk hair body with a deer hair wing and a parachute hackle. Um, and there are definitely some tricks to it. You're going to watch me struggle with this a little bit. I've tied four of them this morning messing around. And uh, um, we'll see if I can't get the, the fifth one to come out just perfect so that I look like a hero. Um, and if I don't, then, hey, we're going to say this is a learning experience for everybody. Um, it's been been quite a while since I've done one of these. So, um, no, it's been about 10 minutes since I've done one of these. But um, before that, it was a long time. Um, Anyway, we're going to get started. Um, so I'm going to take a size 12, 2487, and clamp it in my vise. And I'm going to take some, some gel spun thread. Um, this is nano silk. This is 18 knot nano silk. Um, and I'm going to use brown. Uh, I'm going to tie you kind of a Colorado green drake, um, which is a little uh, a little darker than an Idaho green drake. Idaho green drake I would tie with yellow thread. Um, those bugs have a little bit more of a yellow rib than a brown rib. Um, and I'm going to wrap this thread just about back to the to the point on the hook. You can see I'm just slightly behind the point on the hook. Um, and we're going to grow this fly a little bit, so I'm going to get our focus a little better. Um, I think we're good there. Um, and at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to put um, just a little shot of super glue on the hook. Big gooey shot of super glue on the hook. Um, and then I'm going to take some 15 pound mono and I'm going to pinch the end of it with my D-bar pliers get that pinched and show you what I did. made a little paddle on the end um, and what this is going to do is help to anchor this down securely in place so I'm going to lay that flat piece against the hook and I want to tie it right on top just wrap right over that white glue and anchor that down good and tight there. Um, now, as for the length of this, we can leave this fairly long. I'm going to leave it, oh, let's say that's three quarters of an inch long. We're going to trim that later, um, but I'm going to trim that off out of the way. Um, now I'm going to bring my thread up to the eye of the hook and back again, and I'm going to place my wing in here. My wing's going to be the next thing that goes in, um, and I want the wing to be fairly far back. You can see that's it's not quite halfway. It's probably... I'm going to say 35 or 40 percent of the way, so one third to 40 percent of the way back from the hook eye. Um, and the reason for that is, is on the finished fly, um, you want that little sort of bulbous head right behind the hook eye. So we want to leave enough room to do that. And if you get your wing too far forward, which I did on the first several, um, if you don't leave enough room, that that'll be uh, it presses that that last segment too far forward. Um, so now I'm going to take some deer hair, and I like, um, you can use elk hair for this, but I like deer, and this is some dark colored, um, um, oh, ex caddis hair is what, what this works great for. Um, so it's got those darker tips, and it's pretty well modeled, um, and it matches the color of a real green drake wing pretty darn well. Um, so I'm going to clean that out and stack it up in my stacker. So I've got a nice, clean, even clump. And I'm, I use a fairly good-sized bunch. Uh, I'm going to peel that out of my stacker. Get this in my fingers here. I'll show you the idea. Um, so a pretty, 
pretty nice sized chunk of hair. Um, I don't like a sparse wing on these. I want these to be fairly heavy. And I'm going to leave my thread hanging there at that 35% point or so. Um, and I want, you know, one and a half, you know, if I kind of measure down our mono here, it's really about one and a half shank length long, uh, fairly long wing. Um, green drakes have a tall wing. Um, I'm going to move that tie end point forward. And I'm going to put two turns around it. And I'm going to tighten that thread toward me to flare that hair. So this is just like you'd do um, a Comparadun or Sparkle Dun um, or an X Caddis wing. Um, and then I'm going to start to make a band of thread um, that will slowly travel back to anchor those butts in place, like so. Um, now I'm going to try to not let go of these butt ends. But I'm going to come up in here and hold those at an angle, and I want to cut them as close as I can get them. And I usually have to do a couple snips, yep, to get those trimmed out. Um, and then I'll clean that up a little bit. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Got one random butt in there. Now I'm going to take my thread down through those butt ends, and you can see that's going to build sort of a taper there. But one of the this nano thread, um, and they didn't have this um, back when I was tying these as a kid, um, so this <laughs> makes this jump much easier. Um, but uh, one of the things about this nano thread is I could tie down. That was a giant chunk of hair, and I tied it down with very little bulk. Um, now I'm going to draw this wing up. So I'm going to close my fingers under the hook and draw that wing up. And I like to, again, just like a comparadun, um, I'm going to push that wing, push against the front edge of that wing with my thumbnail to sort of stand it upright. And then I'm going to build a bit of a thread dam. And this th thread is so thin, um, you sort of have to exaggerate your thread dam. This is one of the few instances where I would uh, make the... Uh, the parachute post out of hair, and this is more a nod to to tradition than um, than anything anything else really. Um, a yarn wing on this would would actually be much easier, but that's not a true paradrake. So I'm going to show you how to tie the real thing, um, and then you can make adjustments however you like. Um, so we've got a big bushy hair wing on there. Um, you can see that spread out. It's basically a comparison. Um, now I'm going to grab that wing. I'm going to reach over my vise and get myself a little thread here. Um, and I'm going to take a couple turns around the base just to gather that hair up. I like to pull kind of tight on that. You'll see that. That'll flare that out. Now I'm going to bring the thread from the top. I'll invert the bobbin. Um, and really I'm going to treat this like we would a regular yarn parachute post. So you can see I took three turns there um, and got fairly high up the wing. Now one thing I like to do when I get to the top here is cinch that thread. See how as I pull on that thread, that'll flare that deer hair? Um, I want that wing to flare out. And I can work back down a bit to the base of the hook, or base of the wing down to the hook. And we've got a nice posted wing, deer hair wing. Um, now, one thing I found as I've been tying these, um, it does not hurt to put a little shot of thin glue on that tie down. Um, that just anchors everything in place. That uh, nano silk can be kind of slick. We've got a big chunk of hair tied down there. Uh, so I'm going to put a little little shot of thin, uh, that's Starbond super glue, the thin formula, um, right there at the base. Um, generally, we've got to wait for that to dry. So I am going to wait just a second. I'm going to pause for a second and let you... Um, I'm going to pause and do whatever I want. As far as you're concerned, I'm going to be right back in one second. So pause. All right, I told you I'd be right back. That didn't take long at all. Um, so that glue is now dry. So now I'm not going to stick my fingers to it or, or any of that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a hackle. And um, I want a, a fairly large hackle if you bent this against the hook. Um, it's slightly bigger than the gap of the hook. And you've got to remember this is a two extra long, or I'm sorry, two extra wide hook gap. Um, so fairly wide hook gap. But what I want to do is I want to strip some bare stem off the base of that feather. And I'm going to tie it in with the inside of the feather toward the hook to the shank at the base of the wing. And I'll anchor it right up to the base of the wing. 
and then I'm going to pull that feather around the far side. So what I ultimately want to end up with is, is exactly what you're seeing right there, is the inside of the feather toward the wing. Um, if it turns, it's not the end of the world. We can, we can bend that feather over and change it a bit. Um, but what I want to do here is post that feather to the wing. So I'll come up that post, and you can see once that glue is dried, that wing's very solid, so that makes a much more solid base. So I'm going to come up that post and back down again and around the hook. Now, one thing that you'll fight with is this feather will be in your way in this next step, so I'm going to just fold it back in my material spring out of the way. Um, now for the body. Oh, nope. Nope. I'm not showing you that trick yet. I'm going to put the tail in. Boy, that would have been great had I finished all this and not put the tail in. Um, so the tail on this fly is going to be just a few strands um, of moose body hair. Um, and what I ideally want are three. Um, I'll tell you, in uh, years past, one of the tricks I learned um, was to tie in more than three, uh, because the way we're going to do this is we're going to uh, sort of fold the body back over everything and uh, end up trimming the butt ends of the elk hair body off later. Um, and if you've got just the three in there, it's a good chance you're going to trim one of them. Um, so I'm going to take, I don't know, I've got five or six here. Um, but I'm going to take these five or six, um, and I'm going to measure these, and you have to kind of gauge the length um, of what you want the, the body to ultimately be. Uh, I'm going to say I want the ends of those tails um, all the way out there at the end of that mono, but my, my body's going to end about here. I like a short tail. Um, maybe go just a skosh longer, like so. And then I'm going to tie that down. You can see I caught a couple hairs from the wing. I'm not going to sweat that. Pull that loose one out. And I just want to anchor that hair down. And then I can trim those butt ends off. And I've got those anchored right up to the, to the base of where we uh, started that model. So you can kind of get an idea of what we got there. Um, so that tail is going to determine the length of your of your finished body. All right now, I'll clip my hackle back out of the way, and I'm going to take. All right, we'll get our light back. Um, I'm going to take this is elk rump, um, and I like a nice chunk of this. Um, this is olive dyed elk rump that I'm going to use for the body here, <clears throat> and I don't need to stack this up, but I do want to clean it out. Um, and you can you can stack it. You know, if it makes it, it might make it a little easier to to follow on the screen here. Um, it doesn't need to be perfectly even. We're going to end up cutting the tips off. But I want to stack like so. Um, a fairly good sized little bundle. And I like to work, <clears throat> excuse me, closer to the tips. That hair, uh, closer to the tips, the top half of the hair anyway, um, is a little harder, a little more solid, doesn't flare out quite so much. Um, it's going to make this job a little bit easier. So I'm going to take that hair and trim it off so that I've got a square end. And I'm holding this in my thread hand here. Um, I'll give you an idea of what that length looks like. It's fairly long, more than long enough. Um, and I'm, I've got my thread hanging just behind the hook eye. I'm going to come in and put, put that here just behind the hook eye. Put one turn, two turns, three turns around that hair. And you can see I just flared the hair with that, uh, that first turn. Um, I see here on my near side I've got a short hair in there. I don't want to get out. All right, so I've just just started to flare that hair. Now I'm going to draw the thread toward me and spin that hair. Um, and you can sort of work your thread through those butt ends. And ultimately what you want is that sort of 360 degree spin. Um, fairly sparse. It's not, not terribly heavy. It's not truly like spinning deer hair. Um, although it, I guess it truly is. Um, <laughs> we're, try, we're not trying to make it quite so dense. Um, and now I want to work my thread back through those butt ends right up to the front edge of the wing. And you can see you just kind of manually manipulate, move things you know, as they need to be. Now what we want to do is we're going to fold this back, this hair back, this elk, um, back to make, to form the body. Um, and essentially this is the same thing that you do on a bullet head. Um, and you can use a tool for this. Um, on these I find that I kind of just part the hair around the wing and I'll just kind of start pulling hair back. You want to keep it separate from the wing. There we 
go. A lot of this goes on typically inside my fingers, but I'm trying to make it a little more clear for you guys to see. So you can see as I draw that hair back, um, I can see on the screen, you can see this hair right there. Um, it's not really in line. I want to try to get that as straight and in line as I can get them. That's a little better. Draw that back tight. Um, as I hold back here, you can see in my fingertips, I've got some of the some of the wing hair there. Um, that's not a big deal. I'm not tying down there yet. I'm going to take the thread right at the base of the wing and just make about three turns, and that's going to form that little head. Um, I'm going to turn it and take a look. I see on this side I've got a weird hair here that's got a little sharp edge. I'm going to unwind those three turns. I'm going to do it again. I just want to make sure that that's clean and tight there. And I've got that hair pulled taut. That's a little better. Yeah, a little better. And I'll stand that wing up again. And I'm just going to hold this hair taut as I come behind it. And really what I'm going to do here is make spiraling turns. Got one deer hair in that wing that wants to fight with me. There we go. Spiraling turns, traveling back down the bend, and I try to make them get smaller as I go. I'm going to come up off the extended body and just continue those spiraling turns. And I'm handing this hand to hand. You can see how I'm holding on here. And just working the thread around that extended body portion. Let's go one more. When I get to the end, I'm going to stack a few turns to make a nice clean tie down, like so. All right. Now I'm going to spiral forward again. Um, and the, the trick to this, as you can see, I'm working this all in my hand here, and I'm just handing the thread around the vise, and I actually hand it to my pinky finger here on the far side of the vise. I realize that's not showing as well as I had anticipated. Until I, I get back up to the shank. Now, once I get here, I can spiral this thread. And I want to sort of make cross hatches as I come forward over the segments. And I want to end with the thread going around the base of the wing. So we've got our extended body with those nice little X's. All right, so now before we go on to the, to the wing here, uh, what we want to do is sort of isolate those moose hairs. Um, and I, gosh, I did a pretty good job of that right there, and I can see I've got at least three of them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that bunch up and trim that off close. <clears throat> then I'll pull this bottom bunch down. And, and just because somebody's going to ask, by all means, if you know if you cut those off or if you forgot them, you could use three of these hairs. Um, they tend to, you, you have to gauge your length. These are these are within reason. Um, you have to gauge your length. It's a little harder thing to, uh, to get right every time. Um, but you absolutely could use the butt ends of that that elk hair for these tails. So I'm going to cut those out just down flush to the thread and then I'll stand those three moose hairs up away from that mono stub and get a hold of them. See what we've got there and I'm going to come in and trim that mono stub out. My hand's going to be in the, little, in the way a little bit right here. There we go, leaving three of those moose hairs. Um, when I turn this, give you a little angle, you can see those three, and they're pretty, they're pretty slight. Um, there's actually one little short one in there that I don't like. So we're gonna get, we got four. That was from that group. So we're gonna trim one of those out of there. I got it and didn't get any of the others, so we're calling that victory. Um, kind of tweak those tails into place. I don't sweat them too much. I realize that's not showing great against my dark shirt. Um, so now my thread is hanging here at the base of the wing, going, uh, in my case, tying left-handed clockwise around the wing. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pick up my hackle feather, um, and what I want to do is bend this feather over so that it will wrap inside up. So I've got the inside of the feather here. And I'm going to wrap from the top of this post. Um, and I like to go a little heavy on this. Four or five turns. One right under the last. And kind of jam that in tight. 
to create our parachute. I'm going to pick up my thread and come between the hackle and the body, tie that off with a couple turns. Now as I come, and I think you've got a good angle here, as I come around on this last turn, I'm going to sweep this up. I don't generally need to. I want my feather to be down. Um, I don't generally need to, but what I want you to see here, see if I can do it, is when you bring this thread forward, like you were going to continue a wrap, I'm just going to bring it down into that notch. Then I can trim my feather stem out. And I've got a nice parachute hackle and my thread's hanging in that last head section uh, notch that we that we formed first. Weird hackle fiber over here. Get that out of there. Then I'll come in with my whip finisher. I'll sweep that hackle up and just make my whip finish right in that segment. Trim that thread out. Push my hackle back down. I always like to check and see if there's any any weird strands. There's always a couple. Trim those out. And that is our paradrake. Oh, I think I just lost your focus. There we go, a little better. Um, that's our paradrake. So, like I say, you can tie that in a lot of colors. You can tie it for a green drake. This is old Mike Lawson pattern. Um, you can try it, tie it for a green drake, a gray drake, a brown drake, um, any of the larger size mayflies. Um, one of the cool things about it is it makes a nice stout body like that, pretty tall wing. Um, and in the case of those big bugs, it's it's a much better match. Um, the advantage you get from tying in an extended body like this is to tie this on a regular hook, you'd have a really big metal hook in there um, that's hard to float. <clears throat> in the case of this shorter hook, we've got an extended body, so we've got a big fly on a smaller hook. Um, it's still a size 10, so it's still a big hook, but we'd have to use an 8 or 6 um, to get the length that we need out of this. So uh, we're able to downsize that a little bit. But that is our loss in Paradrake. Hopefully I didn't fumble around with that too much. I hope I made that look easy. Um, it ain't an easy fly. It's something you got to fight with a little bit. Um, I got it in five tries, so I'm feeling pretty good after 25. Ugh, gosh, I say 25 years. 25 years ago, I was 25. I probably tied these when I was 13 um, is when I was tying these for, uh, for West Bank. Um, so that goes way back, however many years ago that was. Um, 40 years, getting close to 40 years ago. <clears throat> getting one to come out that well after 40 years, I'm not going to complain about. So there we are. There's your pair, Drake. Norm, I hope you enjoy that. Max, I hope you've never seen this before. Um, now all of you have seen it, so problem solved. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. If you need anything, give us a shout at Charlie Slybox or just check out the website. Uh, it's all on there. Um, lots of cool stuff always coming. You guys take care.